Hi there guys, hope you're all well. Um, I think I have got something monumental for anyone out there that has been affected by the Mandela effect. Um, this is what I believe personally, in, in my opinion, this is proof as to what it is that is causing the Mandela effect. Um, so I've put in another video, so I've had two previous videos, one where I first theorised that it could have been Project Pegasus, which was about time travel. I later, I guess, revoked that and put up a different video about D-Wave computers. Um, again, for anyone that's new to my videos, I have put many, many hours into trying to understand. I'm not a quantum physicist. Um, I'm just just an average guy that has been affected by this, as I'm sure other people have, and I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. So I've just been researching and researching and researching, um, and this is what I believe has caused the Mandela effect. So bear with me. I'm going to read this out here, and then I'm going to show you some bits that are very very interesting that will hopefully open up some more doors for other people's research as well. Right, so the headline is Venture Capitalist Explains How Quantum Computers Harness Parallel Universes. It sounds very Mandela effecty there. Right, so I'll, I'll whiz through this text here because this isn't overly important as the next bits that I'm going to show you. So recently, quantum computing company D-Wave Systems, so for those of you that are new to this, you need to look up these D-Wave computers I'm sure it's them that have, I know everyone's going on about CERN, and CERN are still on my radar. However, judging by the theoretics of what this computing system can do, to me this sounds like Mandela effect straight away. Right, so D-Wave Systems announced that it had broken the thousand qubit barrier, an important breakthrough according to experts who speculate on the really weird physics behind quantum computing. Quantum computers encode information in quantum bits. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'll let you guys read that. Um, that to me isn't overly important. That's just telling you about what the quantum bits are. To be honest, I don't know about that side of it. As I say, I'm not a quantum physicist. Um, computing with parallel universes. In fact, the exotic and really weird fringes of fundamental quantum physics play a role of growing importance in practical applications. In a short video, so I'll show you that short video shortly, released in January before the recent D-Wave announcement, venture capitalist Steve, simple terms are quantum computers. Okay. So firstly introduced in 1957 by theoretical physicist whoever the many worlds interpretation. So I'm going to show you about this, MWI. I think that we need to shift our focuses to this now after reading about this. The many worlds interpretation. So I'd never heard of this before I read this article. And yeah, you're going to be blown away by what it says in a minute. The account of quantum physics say that the weird and counterintuitive quantum superpositions extend across parallel universes. A qubit. Oh, I don't know about qubit. Okay, so it's just talking about the qubits more. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'll just go straight on to showing you the video. If you think computing is done, there's a really weird experiment going on in quantum computing, which uh, there are you know, five or six different efforts that think it's 10 years out in this one group, which says we're ready for prime time and scaling. This weird guy from Canada, Jordy Rose. And uh, Google bought the first one uh, in the Bay Area, in Lockheed Martin uh, in Southern California, bought the one before that. But what's astounding is they're applying it to machine learning, which is what Google does across all their new products. And they think it's a path to AI, that this is going to be the best way to do things like image recognition, which they're currently doing, like you know, seeing cats on the internet or recognizing cars or recognizing different gestures for Google Glass so that you can be even more weird with your head as you try to use glass. Um, but more practically, it's going to be um, just under and underlies everything that Google is doing. If it seems weird and like autonomous cars, under the covers, machine learning and deep learning explains why they're into that industry and they, and they realize they can apply that capability across different sectors. But what gets really weird about quantum computing is if, um, kind of like thinking back to Moore's Law, wrapping this full circle, 
If he, you know, we first met Jordy Rose and first invested here. He had a one qubit machine and he was waiting for the two qubit version to come out, um, but it hadn't yet actually, sorry, the two would be here and this is I think four on the log scale. Well, maybe a two on the log scale. Um, oh right, that's the four qubit there. So the two qubit one hadn't come out yet, we invested here and he said, I think it's gonna double every year, number of qubits. So again, logarithmic scale, straight line would be an exponential, but when you add qubits, it's very much unlike um, uh, Moore's law on, on that other curve. This is like a Moore's law on top of a Moore's law. It's more like going from a 32-bit architecture and Intel to a 64-bit. It's like a two to the n phenomenon, roughly. Uh, I mean, there's some derating factors, but it means that it gets pretty, pretty weird pretty quickly. Which is, if you fast forward a little bit, we currently have machines that they're making that are competitive with class computers. So after all this work, it's finally kind of like a laptop, that big black box you saw. But you fast forward just you know a little bit it becomes faster than all computers on Earth. Now again, they, they only do one particular type of problem. It's not general purpose computing, but it's you know, graph optimization. It, it maps to machine learning and Monte Carlo simulations and protein folding and stuff. So it's interesting for supercomputing, but here's where it gets really, really crazy. Go forward just a little bit farther, faster than the universe. Now what the hell does that mean? That means if you took all the matter of the universe and reconstituted it into the best computer that Intel could ever design, giving them the length of the universe to work on the problem. So the best theoretical computer that could be built, and you give that universe-sized computer the length of our universe in terms of history, um, how many, you know, the 13 billion years that we've been around, they still couldn't solve problems that the quantum computer could solve readily. That's mind-bending, and, and the only physics explanation for how it works, um, oh, there was that one for, oh, actually, was that, uh, oh, yeah, it was just David Deutsch saying that summary. Um, is that it basically engages the computational resources of parallel universes. Now that is a point of, of competitive differentiation you don't often hear in a pitch to say, <laughs> Intel's just using this inner universe, well, how can they possibly compete, right? Um, that's where my head explodes, but I, I think it's, it's pretty exciting. If, if, if I give it a 10% chance that it doesn't hit some roadblock like noise or something that, that makes it fall off the rails, and if it just keeps going a couple more, kind of like Moore's Law, just a couple more dots on that curve, they currently are bringing up their first thousand qubit machine. As we okay, speak. guys, so hopefully you found that video there a bit interesting. Um, so going on to the many worlds interpretation, this is what I find particularly interesting. And I'm going to do a lot more research on this. As I say, I've never heard of this prior to reading this article. The many worlds interpretation is an interpretation of quantum mechanics that asserts the objective reality of the universal wave function and denies the actuality of wave function collapse. Okay, bear with me. Uh, it's quite technical here, but they do break it down a bit. As I say, I'm not a quantum physicist. So many worlds implies that all possible uh, alternate histories and futures are real, i.e., the JFK assassination. As I say, I've watched that video not even that long ago, a few months back. I can't remember for what reasons, but I would happen to be watching that. And I'm telling you now, for any disbelievers, whether you, you know me, you, dis, you disbelieve me, whatever you want to say, I'm telling you, I saw a different video than what is the supposed assassination now. Okay, each representing an actual world or universe. So in layman's terms, so this was, <laughs> this is the bit that I like. So um, the hypothesis states there is a very large, perhaps infinite number of universes and everything that could possibly have happened in our past but did not has occurred in the past of some other universe or universes. The theory is also referred to as MWI the relative state formulation, the Everett interpretation, the theory of the universal wave function. Many of you know, the original relative state formula is due to here. Okay, so looking at this, guys, I'm going to do a lot more research on this MWI, many worlds interpretation, but for anyone that is new to this Mandela Effect thing, hopefully, again, the reason why I'm putting this video up is to, for anyone that's trying to understand how this maybe happened, there's many people up on the internet or on YouTube showing examples of what's happened, which is great because that lends weight to it, but I feel like I have personally seen enough examples now to know that it's real. I've experienced enough of my own examples to know that it's real. I now want to know the who, what, where, when, how, 
I, I want to know the reasons behind why this is happening. Um, again, I'm not discrediting anyone for putting examples up. I, I keep up the good work. As I say, it's drawing more attention to this. Um, I just personally want to know why. Why is someone doing this? Why is this happening? Why are there changes in the Bible? Why, why is there this? Why is there that? Um, but then once you know the whys, you've got to also understand the hows. How is it possible? Um, is, is the technology available? Um, I think we've shown that the technology is theoretically available. Um, I'm gonna tr so so what I would suggest as well because there's a lot of internet for me to trawl through. Um, so again, another reason why I'm putting this video up is effectively asking people as well if they know anything about this many worlds interpretation. Again, no time for any naysayers out there um, or any internet trolls or what are they called shills or whatever, or whatever the name is. Um, I'm taking my own time to, to help with this. As I say, I'm affected by it. I want to help other people that are affected by it. But I also think that we need to focus our attentions more on, as I say, who, what, where, when, how, why. Um, anyway, guys, hopefully someone's found this helpful out there. I'll try and make the video look a bit nicer. Um, it's a little bit disjointed and all over the place at the moment. Um, yeah, that's all from me, guys. Thanks again, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Bye.